promises in the morning where you are or right in the afternoon. In the morning I will give you all the glory, oh God. In the noon time I will worship you with all I've got. In the night time I'll be there to praise your name. Oh, we give you all the praise. In the morning I'll be there to worship you, my God. In the noon time I will give you all the glory. Oh, at night I will arise and I will bless your name. I will sing of your mercy and your love, of your goodness and your grace. Hallelujah. I will sing of your mercy and your love, of your goodness and your grace hallelujah oh 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 glory to your name we shout it loud we shout it loud glory to your chapter 3. It says that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. It says they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. This year alone, thousands of people have passed away. This year alone, numerous people have gone to the grave. But here you are, here I am. Give him all the praise. I will sing. I will sing.
ashes we reign into the darkness you shine into the darkness we shine there's no one there's no one like that's right hallelujah god bless you choir there's none like hey, you my god is greater Shut 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are on the planet. I hope you're well and everyone around you is doing great. I want to welcome you to the 2020 RI7000 International Conference. This is a conference held in multiple cities across the globe in partnership with churches which unites with this vision. RI7000 is a non-denominational believers global revival movement which God has commissioned his servant, Apostle Kingsley Alfred, to launch in January 2007 with a mandate of inspiring, imparting, and reviving the preserved of the Lord. And friends, that includes you and me. See, this vision was inspired by 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, and Romans chapter 11, verse 4, which says, Yet I have preserved 7,000, all knees that have not bowed to bow, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Even at this present time, brethren, there is still a remnant chosen by grace. That is why I write 7,000 has been set out. One, to restore the discouraged in faith and service, to stir up the souls of the fearful, challenge the call of God unto greater service, and lift up the hopes of believers in this end time, to strengthen the servants of the Lord and motivate every believer to be their best wherever and in whatever circumstances they are in. For instance, in this global pandemic, we are really trusting God that through this conference, God will stay and motivate believers and every one of us to be the best we can be in the mighty name of Jesus. By the grace of God, brethren, Arise 7000 has really come a long way. You see, the maiden edition was held in October 2008 in the seaside resort of Bognorages in the west of um, West Sussex of um, south of England. And since then, RI7000 has been held in multiple cities, for example, London, Manchester, Leicester, Portsmouth, Sarincester, Ilefe, Bado, among others across UK and in Nigeria. And now we are reaching a global outreach. We are connecting with the global world through the medium of technology. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the theme of this year is contending for the faith. Contending for the faith, which was taken from Jude chapter uh, Jude verse 3. Amen. And I believe that as we partake of today's conference, um, let me leave you with these words of prophetic word from our, uh, our apostle, um, Reverend Kingsley Alfred, especially in the midst of this pandemic. The Lord said to him that in the last days, the church must prepare to witness the greatest revival of all times. For it is time to seek the fire and live ready, flying kingdom banners, anytime, anywhere, any day. And from, for God is coming to take us, Jesus is coming to take his church without spot nor wrinkle. So once again, I want to welcome you to Rise 7000 Online 2020. And I see God's blessing resting on you as you watch in Jesus' name. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you, at the end of today, will be inspired at the end of this conference, will be impact, impacted by the word of God, and you will be revived in Jesus' name. God bless you, and I will see you again, and enjoy the worship and the word for today. God bless. Oh 
oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise. Nothing 
Wow, 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 you just stand, you just stand, haven't done all things to stand, stand ye therefore, can you lift your hands where you are and praise the Lord and adore him and worship him and bless him and thank him for keeping you standing till this day, thank you Lord Jesus, the Bible says stand ye therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ have set you free, I'm glad I'm liberated in Christ and I'm glad that I'm still standing in Christ, my dear brother, sister, worship him and thank him. It's time to stand more than ever in the history of times, even in the journey of your faith and my faith. Oh God, we bless you. We thank 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 you. That uh, despite all, in spite of all, that we are still standing and will continue to stand to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we give the Lord a big, 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 hand if you pray it out amen and hallelujah amen hallelujah i welcome you dearly to this session on this occasion of the arise 7000 international conference indeed god has helped us thus far and we have come thus far in this conference this conference has been a blessing to you i know if you have been watching if you have been listening through following through the messages and the sessions so far you must have been blessed definitely and yet god is not done with you he still has more to offer you and may you in the name of jesus be able to stay strong and stay true this conference you know to enjoy the entire package god has for you God bless you one more time for being in this session and may the Lord increase his grace upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise 7000 Conference. Today, I want to go on on this session and share with you on contending for the faith, standing strong in this end time with joy, hope, and praise. We want to be able to contend for the faith and still stand strong all through. We don't want to just contend for the faith and fall by the wayside. We don't want a situation whereby we're contending for the faith and we claim to be standing, but not with joy, not with hope, and not with the praise of God that ought to be on our lips because actually contending for the faith should be an exciting thing for you and I. It is something we must do, and we must do it with all excitement. We must do it with all joy. We must 
we must do it with the praise of God right on our lips. And this is what I want to share with us today, looking through what Jude wrote to us in verse 24. Jude verse 24. And it says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. With exceeding joy. I love that. Now you go to First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, and we read that as our second text. It says, Watch ye, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men, be strong. I love that. Watch ye, stand first in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I do pray that by your mighty hand, you will strengthen us. By your spirit, you will make us stronger than we even came into this meeting by the time we are done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for all you've been doing and thank you for that which you're doing right now. Thank you for that which you're going to do in the course of this very conference going forward and we just want to ask that you will help us right now not just to preach and to teach your word but also to listen through and understand and assimilate in the name of jesus christ god bless you say amen amen hallelujah on this session of this in this conference like i said earlier it is my joy to speak to us on what i titled contending for the faith standing strong in this end time there is a need for us to understand that jude when he was writing he was writing particularly and specifically to believers and his charge is so direct and so clear so practical that it does it did, it does not only connect with the, you know his generation but also connect with us it was clear that the Holy Spirit was writing through him uh, an epistle meant for believers, no matter the age, no matter the stage, no matter the times we exist or live on earth. And in verse 24, as he was concluding that singular letter he was writing, he wrote there, he said, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. If there is anything we all are open to, or you know, common thing that we all are open to, that is likely to happen to we all and to anybody, it is that uh, uh, it's, it, it is that of falling, is that of stumbling. There is every tendency and possibility that as we contend for the faith, we might see some fall. We might face some stumbling block and some may stumble over that block and therefore he writes here and said look it's my prayer i want to commit you i want to leave you unto him who is able to keep you from falling who is he that is able to keep us from falling he goes ahead to tell us that it is the holy spirit by simply saying to us in the in the in the other part it says he that is able to keep us to falling is the same that will present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy we know that the holy spirit is the god of the now he is the one that have been you know giving to us the church the believer to walk with at this dispensation God operated at his own dispensation so clear, so direct with the children of Israel in the Old Testament. Jesus came and indeed operated in his own dispensation directly with the apostles and those who, who believed in him then. And then he was going away and said to us, he's sending us the Holy Spirit who is going to really be with us and teach us and counsel us and show us the way. And so Jude writing to the church is writing to them, reminding them that there is one that has been given to us 
who is able to keep us from falling and also who has the desire and the aim to present us faultless before God, even before his presence at the end of the day with joy. Now, so the Holy Spirit has an assignment, an assignment that is so crucial, so important that the Holy Spirit himself will in every sense love to see fulfilled. And this is important for you and I to take note of. The second thing he mentioned there is that he is all out to present us faultless, faultless. So if we all are likely, we are prone to falling or stumbling for which he wants to keep us from falling. Um, and also we are prone to faults. We are f- prone to faults for which he has to you know, cleanse us and work on us so that we will be faultless then the Holy Spirit has a mission over our lives and we have a mission to cooperate with the Holy Spirit because the same faults that the Bible talks about that the Holy Spirit intends to take away from us or cleanse us from so that we will be presented faultless is that same fault that can make us fall. And so the Holy Spirit will be working on these two aspects together. Is working to keep us from falling by making us faultless. And so we need to understand that our cooperation with him is important. Faults like the faults of sin, the faults of weakness, the faults of faithlessness, the faults of unreasonable services to God, all of those faults could make us fall. It could make us not to run the race. You know, the Bible says that we should, you know, uh, we should put, put aside every weight and every you know sin uh, and the sin rather the sin that does so easily beset us from running the race so there is always that fault that can stop us from running the race for which god has released the ministry of the holy spirit to help us in so the reality we have therefore as believers is that we must do everything to stand and to be upstanding the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth and he went through it all standing. He left us with the Holy Spirit, one of his kind and one of his quality, to also help us and keep us standing. Because when we do not stand, we cannot be our best for God. The Holy Spirit came and he is instructed to teach us that we may know the way and stand instructed to lead us that we may not stumble instructed to guide us so that we may not stumble instructed to strengthen us so that we can keep standing instructed to counsel us so that we walk in safety instructed to comfort us so that we will stand again even if we fall instructed to remind us of the things that jesus have taught us so that we will not forget and we can keep abreast with that reminded to convict us even when we have sinned so that we can quickly repent and get standing again so you see that the ministry of the holy spirit to us in every dimension is all about getting us back to our feet or even keeping us on our feet never to fall again and so our own duty is to listen to hearken to incline to obey him to submit to him to cooperate with him to trust his ministry unto us and even make sure we do not grieve him this is very important for us to understand as believers at this level because i am talking about contending for the faith and standing strong in this end time the end times have got a lot of challenges is going to throw at the believer and we you and i need to therefore quit ourselves as men and be strong standing in faith firm in faith standing firm in the lord because the end time is not going to joke around with the believer the end time happenings and occurrences are going to be more targeted on you and i by the devil and the antichrist and so we need to be strong and be strong indeed indeed we need to stand did the bible not say in ephesians chapter 6 haven't done all things to stand you stand if you have done everything one thing you must still make sure you do is that you are standing while you've done everything 
You know, it reminds me of the story of David. When he chose to go, when he decided he was going to face Goliath, and went on to King Saul and said, King Saul, now allow me to go fight this man. Let me go kill this radical that is just trying to oppress us here. And Saul laughed and wondered, you little boy, what do you know about war? Talk less of going to face a conqueror like, uh, like, the, like Goliath. And uh, after the young man spoke so boldly about how God have used him to deliver the sheep he was rearing in the backside of the wilderness from the mouth of the beard and the lion and all that. Okay, so I said, all right, fine. Test number one. Please dress him with my armor. They dressed him with the armor of Saul and he could not move his feet. He couldn't even stand strong or stand well wearing the ammo. That's what we're talking about here. It's not just having done everything. You may have done everything with the ammo on you, but the Bible says, having done all things, stand. If you still cannot stand, haven't done all things, no, something else needs to be done to help you stand. Because standing is important. If you are going to fight, if you are going to contend, if you are going to take a position, if you are going to assert your position, if you are going to really confront the opposition if you are going to contend right then you need to contend standing and so the armor was taken off david and david was standing again and he said i better go this way because i need to be standing to face that man praise god forevermore don't you ever say stand and keep standing as you contend in the name of jesus christ yes you have to know to stand to be able to contend and so we need to understand that we have to stand and we must do everything we know to do to stand the big question therefore So you and I will be this. Can you write them down and please start answering those questions within your mind as I share. Do you know the Holy Spirit, therefore? Do you know the Holy Spirit? Have you had an encounter with the Holy Spirit? Are you filled with him? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you know his voice? It's a big question here to answer. Do you know his voice when he speaks to you? Do you take his words or instructions seriously? When he speaks to you, do you take it seriously? You see, if you cannot find the right answers for these questions, that tells you your state and that tells you that you need to really change and make a good turn towards the holy spirit because he's the only one who is able to keep you from falling and present you walk on you and present you faultless in the presence of his glory at the end of the day it's important here does your lifestyle bring him joy this will be another question to answer does your lifestyle bring him joy or your lifestyle grieves him or makes him angry makes him upset all the time that will not be beneficial to you or to me if i live in a way that we not bring out that is not bringing the holy spirit the dry joy if he's grieved all the time he might as well fold his hands and just watch us and watch us fall off so god forbid that happens please please answer these questions if you are not filled with the holy ghost desire to be filled with holy spirit by the time we finish pray, preaching here, you can really ask the Holy Spirit for his infilling. And then if you don't know him, it's time you begin to learn about the Holy Spirit, to know him. If you can't recognize his voice, let's say you are filled with him, and you, but, but, but you, you have not practiced really listening to him, so you don't know his voice, it's time to start practicing that. If you cannot keep to his word even when you hear him it's time for you to make up your mind to submit to him and obey his instructions because it will help you it's time for you to watch your lifestyle and make sure you live in a way that does not grieve him the second factor that will help us to stand strong faultless with joy and hope going forward is our depth knowledge and understanding and acceptance the depth knowledge and the depth knowledge understanding and acceptance of god's program for our lives as believers do you know that our lives is not just an accident it is a programmed life before we came to our mother's womb god knew us 
In fact, when God had a mind to create us, he already for, he formed us out based on what he had programmed us to fulfill on earth. And so because of your kind of person, God had to bring your dad and your mom together in marriage so that you can come forth. So you are the reason why your dad married your mom. And that is to let you know that God has been there from the onset in your life. He created you. He formed you. He wrote the script of your life. He programmed your life to run in a particular way. He gave you the destiny and destination you should be pursuing. He indeed laid out for you a path to toll so that you will stand all through and not fall and so that you will end up victorious no matter what happens. So God is the architect of our lives. And if we know that from beginning, then we need to try to find out that depth knowledge, understanding, and accept that program so that we will be able to follow through the, its timetable, follow through its processes, and end up well. The same way it goes with the church of Jesus Christ. When God decided to bring in the church, suspending his program with the Jews, because the Jews will not accept Jesus as Messiah, rather he turned onto the Gentiles, and as many as received him, he gave the power to become his own children. As for Israel, Israel has been his children then, but they will not accept the Messiah in Jesus. So he turned to we Gentiles, and that is how the Gentile church was born. Now, the story is clear here. The church, therefore, must understand that God had a program written out for us from the beginning. There is nothing like an accident in a uh, being of the church. The church was absolutely orchestrated, planned out by God. And we are being called up, we were called up as reserves to fill the gap until Israel is ready. However, God as well, having sent Jesus Christ to die for entire humanity, the church became that program that now grafted everybody, gave everybody on earth an opportunity to be grafted into the very common world of Israel, talking about the common world of God's own children. And so God has this in mind and had it sorted, had it written out, had it planned out. The church does not operate and should not operate on earth as if it was formed by one man. Mm -mm. No man initiated the church. The church was never the idea of man. Just like marriage was never the idea of man. It uh, all the idea of God. That's why they are the institution of God. No nation is the idea of man. That's why it's an institution of God. No marriage is an institution is is, is is an idea of a man. That's why it's an institution of God. Everything God initiated without man's contribution or man's idea is his own institution. And so we need to understand that there is a program originally written in this course for this set of people or things. So the church must not operate based on the way the people in it feels. No, there must be a template to follow from God. There must be a man, a blueprint God has given to that church to be. Are you hearing me? This must be understood for us to be able to <clears throat> contend for the faith and not miss out. If we are to contend for the faith as believers and we don't understand the program of God for the church, now that we understand the program of the faith we are contending for or that was handed over to us, then how can we contend well? So it's good you understand here that what is called church, it's very clearly one God's idea. Number two, it was brought in by God for a purpose and for a time and for a time and so while we are here that is a blueprint we are supposed to run and to follow let me quickly go on here if so that we can catch something and share with you this program of god and these purposes for that program and for that purpose god gave to us the gentile church what is it like do you know that every single one god is bringing to the earth God brings us into the earth with the intention that we will be born infants 
and we will begin to start to grow, waxing strong in spirit and favor both with man and God, like Jesus grew. And then we will start learning of him to, to become like him. That you see, that is that is the aim to learn of him and eventually become like him. To get to know why he created us and brought us on earth and then live to fulfill that reason, that purpose for which he created us, even according to the blueprint attached to that purpose. Mm, this is important. And then at the end of it on earth, return back to him to be rewarded and reunited with him. And then eventually rule and reign with him as we return with him eternally on earth. So God has a plan from beginning. The journey, the blueprint is clear as to what God had in mind for every single one he is bringing to the earth. But no sooner we land on earth, and this is what happens to us. When we got here, we met another process we met another program entirely on ground. This program we met on ground is called the system of the world. It says to us, don't learn of God or try to be like him. That system says to us, follow your own heart and do what you want or even feel like doing. Just go on according to your own written blueprint. Live here on earth. That's what that system introduces us to and tells us to do. Award yourself. Leave everything and go away when you are tired of this world, no matter where it lands you. That system says to you, at the most, at the last minute, towards your end, try to connect with God. <laughs> Maybe you will succeed. My friends, I have learned that those who plan to die by 12 noon, they died quarter two. So don't wait till that last minute. That is not the program God has in mind for you. God has in mind for us a little program from my mother's womb to live out on earth. It's a journey. It's a path. It's a destiny. And we have to follow it to the destination. But you see, the world system we met redefined things for us. And many of us have been really struggling to merge that same world system and the blueprint of God. But may I say to you that it does not tally. You just have to follow God's blueprint on earth. And there is a way for you to do that. Find out what that is. So now as an individual, who haven't gotten to the world. And we follow this above system of the world described there. That leads us, that leads us through the vanity of our own minds and desires. Forgetting that we will one day die and give account of how we lived here on earth. That same system have become the deception of many, have become the derailing of many, have become the contest and the uh, object of contention for many. That has become a system we have to contend against, even in keeping our faith or keeping our destiny in God on earth. And here, while we try to contend with that very system, there is every possibility that a man could fall off and no longer stand and fall entirely into the hands of this system and fail. So God has given us the ministry of the Holy Spirit to follow through. And so God also left us with instructions in his book called the Bible to follow that we may be able to go through this earth successfully. And what are these instructions? I cannot tell you all. But remember that the scripture, in the scripture, for instance, God, Jesus said to us, do not worry yourself about what you shall eat. Matthew 6, if you begin to read from verse 31, it begins to say, do not worry yourself about what you shall eat, drink, wear, or even shelter in. He says, I know you need those things, but please do not focus on them. Rather, focus on my kingdom and all its rightful dictates. Follow that. Focus on that. Make it your priority. I will ensure that you have all those needs that you desire or want. So God is simply saying to us here, 
you have come into this world where there is a competing system, a deceptive system, a system that can take you off the course of the program I have for you. But I'm saying to you, don't be worried about its distractions. You follow my own way, focus on me and my kingdom and my ways. I will make sure you have all the things, yes, that you need here to go on here on earth till you fulfill that journey now remember he also did say to us that even when you seem to be lacking those things all you need to do is ask and you shall receive seek you shall find nor can it shall be opened unto you for he that asketh receive it he that seeketh find it he that knocketh it is opened unto he says unto us, learn to share out of what I provided for you. I will keep supplying your needs according to my riches in glory based on my own heavenly economy. So this advice is an instruction from God in the Bible is to help us focus on his program and not to be distracted by this program that we have met within the world system. He says to us, keep my commandment or keep my covenant and i will give you power to get wealth even the material things you need and have to do i will give you the power to reach them you see god said just keep my covenant just keep my covenant i will take care of that why was god committing himself this much is because he wanted us to follow his program and not be distracted did he not say to us in the bible as well i will teach your hands to prop to make profits i will help you i will contend with those that contend with you i will will defend you and keep you i will be with you always and so on and so forth god gave us these promises gave us these instructions gave us these guides because he wanted us to keep to his part and do not deviate so that we can end up well and right he kept promising until he committed himself over 8,000 times in the Bible with promises and promises and promises just to prove to us that he meant it he sent his son Jesus Christ to come to the earth and to die on the cross taking our own punishment unto himself even the punishment of death yes so that we will have an opportunity to still live out his program on earth and for us to be guaranteed that he cares if he will give his son in our place so that we will not be damned that indeed he will take care of our our needs did he not do that he did that so that we will rise up and accept the lordship of jesus whom he has sent and even enter eternal life at the end of the day on earth after we have finished our program no god did all this just for us to concentrate to concentrate more and more on his kingdom and his agenda and to have it foremost in our priority yes he said to us i i want you on earth to be my extensions be my extensions be the extension of my life be the extension of my light be the extension of my love be the extension of my peace be the extension of my joy be the extension of my righteousness be the extension of my hope be the extension of my grace be the extension of my mercy be the extension of my will be the extension of my ways be the extension of my walk in life be the extensions of my words and be the extension of my services on earth he says this is why i programmed you to be here this is what i programmed your life to be like that in whatever it is you begin to do or you do for me here it is to be my extension on earth he said to us in his word rapport well with the holy spirit i have baptized you with do not grieve him do not grieve him submit to him he will lead you 
my way, teach you my lessons, remind you my words. He will surely run my agenda in your life. Hallelujah. God did all of this that we may walk in this in his blueprint for us on earth as believers and as the church on earth he guaranteed us he says i guarantee you the counsel of the holy spirit that i've sent to you is safe just follow his counsel he is ready to counsel you he will even pray for you in the areas where you are weak he will support you in prayer so that you can have better results he says he will comfort you on all sides through the holy spirit so that even when you hit your when you hit difficult times and you seem to be down the holy spirit will be there to comfort you he says i've brought the holy spirit to live in you so that he will stick closer to you than a brother why did god do all this that we may focus on his agenda and program for our lives and do not derail because he knows that in the world we have a system to contend with that will militate against our faith if we do not contend well and contend right he if what i went on to say to us listen this same holy spirit cooperate with him because he's the one i have sealed your salvation by and he is responsible to bring you faultless before me at the end of the day hallelujah oh my god lift up your hands where you are and say holy spirit of god I need more of you. I am sorry I have neglected you. I acknowledge you afresh in my life and in the journey of my faith. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you afresh. Please take the rule, take the control of my heart, of my mind, of my body, of my journey, of my plan. Lead me on, guide me, counsel me, show me the way I want to live better now in the name of jesus christ what a rapport you're supposed to have with the holy spirit what a knowledge of him you're supposed to be abreast of now watch this my friends when god did all these even through the holy spirit he further said to us in his word now i want you to watch out for my coming while you're on earth here i want you to watch out for my coming he re-emphasized this to his disciples in john 14 as he was living and he told them he was about to leave and they were sad and he says to them he said let not your heart be troubled all you have to do is while you're at here you believe in me and believe in god he says ah i'm going to my father's i am going to my father and when i get there i'm going there to prepare you a mansion and when the mansion is ready i will come back for you to take you there because listen to this phrase because where i am there will you be what is he saying the the whole program will end with this i want you to be where i am i want us to be together for eternity i don't want us apart so you can understand that as a believer and as a church that the intention of god in this program is that it will end up well whether you go up to him by death or by rapture the end is that we all will be with him forever and ever and ever eventually so god has a program and a blueprint we cannot live outside that if we must contend for this faith this faith will lead us there if we don't contend for it we might lose that end and god forbid that we lose that end in the name of jesus tap your neighbor say come on contend for the faith contend for the faith and be strong contending hallelujah it is good you understand that we need to contend for the faith and be strong while we contend for the faith and we need to contend for the faith with all joy and excitement now he says while you are doing this what Watch out for my coming. He says, I will give you signs for you to know when my coming is drawing near. Why did he say that to us in the Bible? So that we will not be lost. So that we will be prepared and ready. So that we will not be caught unawares in a way that we will not be able to make it. He says, I will show you signs. 
I will give you signs that indicate of my coming, that my coming is close. So your duty is watch out for those signs. Watch out for those signs. And when you see those things beginning to happen, when you see those things beginning to happen, when you see those things coming to pass, he says, know that the end is at hand. Know that the end is at hand. The end of what? The end of our lives, if we are still alive on earth. The end of the church age. If Jesus have not come, because the coming of Jesus for the church is the end of the church age. That is what the program dictates. So God, through his word, have not left us in the dark at all about what the program is, about the process of the program, about the timetable of the program, about what we should be doing in order not to miss the program. God was complete in the package that he told us about. He says these signs will be by nature. There will be natural signs. Natural signs will be occurring that points to the fact that the end is clear. Spiritual signs will be, political signs will be that indicates that the times of the end is closing up. He says, just watch out for these signs. You will see them coming. He says, hear me, even signs of Israel, my firstborn, what will be happening to them as Jews will tell you much more about the end drawing near. He he says even what will be happening concerning my city Jerusalem will tell you so much about the signs of the end. So why did God do that? Why did God say that? Because every of his program will end up with this Jerusalem that typified the new Jerusalem the eventually where we all shall be dwelt together with him. And so everything is going to end there. Where Jesus started, that's also where he's going to end and so he tells us to watch out for those signs today the church have neglected the aspect of watching out for the signs the ordinary believer in the church do not understand that you need to watch these signs so that one you will contend right number two you'll be able to contend standing strong and not allow the enemy fall you number three so that you will contend faultless you will contend staying faultless and walking to be faultless because it's coming for a fault Faultless church is coming back for a faultless bride. If you don't understand and keep abreast of this program of God for your life to fight and contend strong, contend not falling, contend faultless will be difficult. And that is why I'm bringing you through this. Hear me very well, Church of Jesus Christ. There's something interesting here. Do you know that God brought in the church? And majorly, he brought in the church as reserves to fill in the gap. I did say earlier on in this teaching that when the Jews rejected Jesus who came unto them, he turned, he turned to us. He turned to us because he had us there as reserved. Of course, we were going to be engrafted anyway because he died for all on he died for God so loved the world, not the Jews alone, loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Jesus was given for us all. But it was in mind of God that with the Jews, he was going to bring all of us in. However, the Jews said no to Jesus Christ. He is not our Messiah. This is not the one we are expecting. And so what happens? God turned to the Gentiles and the Gentiles accepted Jesus Christ and so the church was born the church is known to be God's spiritual temple in Israel what you had that typified the presence of God fully is the temple of God that was built in that city and that is there in Jerusalem and so each of these temple was saying so much about God's presence among his people and about these people meeting him at that very temple so the church of jesus christ is a spiritual temple and it is there to fill that gap and space that while god wait for israel so the bible tells us clearly that god have not finished with israel now you go to hebrews uh, to romans sorry romans chapter 11 and you will see what i'm talking about in romans chapter 11 here you see the account Paul was writing on so that you understand here that God 
is not done with the Jews, but he had to bring in you and I, the church, so that we can go on. If you go to chapter 10, for example, in verse from verse 1 of Romans 10, it says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Which means Israel rejecting the Messiah are not yet saved. And so Paul was praying for them here. He said, For I bear them record that they have a zeal, or they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. The knowledge they have about the Messiah is different. But they have this zeal for God. They still believe in Jehovah. They still hold on to Jehovah. But to accept Jesus as Messiah is the problem they are having. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see that? That's the problem they have. That's the challenge they have. Verse 4, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Amen. And then by the time you now go over, therefore, to verse uh, chapter 11 and verse 1, reading down, he says, I say then, had God cast away his people? So have God cast them away since they didn't accept the Messiah? No, he didn't cast them away. God forbid, he says, for I am an Israelite myself, of the seed of Abraham as well, and of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, God had not cast away his people, Israel, which he foreknew, which he foreknew. Amen. Which ye not what the scripture said of Elijah. He said, don't you know what the scripture told us about Elijah? When Elijah, how he inters how he makes, makes, make it intercession to God against Israel, when he indeed took a petition to God against Israel, saying what? Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. That was a petition against Israel Elijah took to God while he was contending for the faith in his own time. And he was right now being challenged in a way that indeed he was falling off his feet. He was about to stumble and so he made this petition against israel before god and yet god what did god say to him and god say it the answer of god unto him was this i have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of baal hallelujah <laughs> God said, don't worry, don't worry. Israel is not the issue here because I have that area covered. I have reserved even from among them some great thousands. I have reserved even among my own people thousands of people who have not submitted to Baal. And what is this about it? He said, even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace even now there is there is there is there is a remnant do you know that this same pattern of what god spoke to paul about or spoke to elijah about concerning israel that the church of jesus christ the gentile church is a type of israel as a nation and so you see now we have taken the salvation that Israel rejected and so God has been walking with us and among us but then amongst us as well we come through phases of low and high today we believe so much in God tomorrow we are down in our faith and God when we are down and backsliding like that he comes reviving us he comes sending us a revival so God says this is the pattern I know that there will always come a time when my people will go astray and go away for whatever reason maybe because they are listening to the world system that my word my, my words in the Bible and so God says listen I have always reserved the people a people some remnant of them according to my divine election that has not and will not 
bow their heads for Baal, neither will they bow their knees for him or kiss him. And such ones I will call them up and use them when it is time. And I'm saying to you through this conference, it is time. I see heaven sending out letters of invitation, calling up the reserves in the kingdom. Because we are at the time in the age of the church when we do not understand the program of God or have not understood it, the church have gone away from the ways of God so much. Instead of the church influencing the world, the world has influenced the church so much. The believer today believes more in the principle and the pattern and things of the living of the world system that they believe the Bible culture, that they believe the Bible tradition, that they believe the things of God. And this is the danger we are faced with. And so there is a call here saying to you and I, it is time for us to return and contend standing strong within the confines of the will of God. Within the confines of the will of God. Within the confines of the will of God. Because that is what we are contending for. So my brother, which areas are you to contend for? If you are going to contend to stand. First Corinthians 16, 13 says, Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quick like men, quick like men, be strong. You are expected to stand strong in faith. Don't let your faith and belief in God, your trust and confidence in God, don't let it sway. Don't let it indeed in any way at all be eroded by anything at all. You have to keep that faith, that trust and confidence in God solid and constant in the name of jesus receive more grace this day to stand firm in faith and then secondly standing fast you are firm and strong we are to stand strong in the liberty wherewith christ have set us free within the boundaries of the freedom of the redemption of god that has come to us my friend what that means is this jesus christ came and redeemed us from our sins saved us from the punishment we're supposed to bear now there are very much there are parameters indeed there are boundaries to that liberty because if we cross that boundary we'll be going back to the old way so god says to us i want you now to learn to stand strong within the boundaries of the liberty that i brought you hallelujah to jesus christ that is why as a believer it's not a matter of you claiming that everything about law is wrong no 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 it's not a matter about you saying no don't be legalistic these do's and don'ts don't count the New Testament says, stand ye therefore in the liberty where we Christ have set you free. And do not be entangled anymore with the bondage of sin. You see that? Because when you walk off that boundary, you'll be entangled with that same old thing that Jesus already done and settled of your life so you have to understand that we have liberty in christ but we have a boundary to walk in within that liberty that's why when you become a child of god you are not expected to live anyhow all things have passed away all things have become new and you're expected to stand strong walking on that new path hallelujah i hope you understand that and do not allow preachers who just live anyhow as well and they just paint the picture as if oh yeah if you are born again you are free to to do anything no you are not free to do anything even paul says all things may be lawful but not all of it is helpful and so for that i will still deny myself of certain things that i may help the faith of one another so there are boundaries there are boundaries grace does not mean do anything shall we say we have grace and therefore uh, say since you continue to abound no 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 in as much as grace abounds we are seen abound the same thing leaves us with a boundary because jesus will always say to everyone he saves go and sin no more go and sin no more so learn to stand therefore in the liberty stand firm stand strong in the liberty while we contend for the faith let's keep standing firm in the liberty where with christ have set us free so that we don't get entangled again with the yoke of bondage amen and then the third thing and third area we are to stand strong in as we contend for the faith is that we are to stand strong according to Philippians 1 27 we are to stand firm in unity in unity stand firm in 
unity in one spirit in one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel listen don't fight your own fight fight the fight of faith don't fight alone fight together with men and people and brethren of faith as well of christian faith as well fight in the unity of spirit together we will win better than when you fight isolated than when you contend isolated learn to support believers course learn to support bible courses learn to support godly courses learn to support righteous courses stop supporting political causes you don't understand you don't even know the details about you don't know what the politicians are doing behind what they are saying the public is what you are taking on board and you are fighting as if it belongs to you as if it's your heritage it is not your heritage child of God for the children for the disciples apostles of Jesus Christ asked Jesus when he was about to leave them he says when shall you restore the kingdom of Israel when will you liberate the kingdom of Israel from the hand the colonization of the romans and jesus said that time is in the hands of the father but you know something church this is your own focus tarry here in jerusalem until you be endued from with power from high for you shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses may i submit and say to you child of god stop delving into areas that is not yours and bring division in the body politics is not to divide us not at all because no matter what goes on there what we are to look out for is God's program and God's agenda what we are to look out for we are to look out in the light and from the standpoint of kingdom of God members and therefore know that we we are not of this kingdom our kingdom is that of God and for that keep the unity of spirit and don't be divided and don't let the enemy divide us because divided we will fall but together we will contend for the faith and win hallelujah to jesus i hope you understand that and do not allow the enemy use these issues of the same world system that is meant to distract you from the program of god to deviate you from the will of god let me close by telling you two more here stand strong as you contend in faith stand strong in the lord not outside the lord in the Lord you have been saved resist every feat and every move of backsliding of backsliding every move of you they being you know, you know, dropping out of faith resist it with everything within you the devil will want you to do things and not to stand in the Lord doing them yes if you are standing in the Lord don't do those things that will get you out of the Lord are you hearing what I'm saying we are to stand strong in the Lord as we contend for the faith we are to stand in unity as we contend for the faith we are to stand in the liberty we have as we contend for the faith we are to stand in faith as we contend for the faith and lastly my friend we are to stand fast holding the tradition of the word of god you see that in second thessalonians 2 15 we are to stand firm on the traditions of the world of the word of god not the world the word of god and on the epistles written to us we are to stand fast on that it is time for you to be a bible believer beyond beyond measure beyond all doubt do not doubt the scripture at all at any instance in any way it is time for you to stand strong standing believing the word of god don't even try to misinterpret it or readdress it or misexplain it or try to bend it to suit your own desire no follow the word of god as it is because it is written for your own benefit it is written to be able to guide you and get you to god eventually and you'll be with him forever i want you to know my friends that if we will aspire to stand strong in the word stand strong in the lord stand strong in unity stand strong in the liberty where we Christ have set us free and stand strong in faith there is nothing that will cause our victory not to be sure as we contend for the faith and this is what we are to do and we are to do these things with joy do it in praise do it with hope there is hope for us we are not hopeless people there is joy ahead of us the bible says about jesus 
in Hebrews 12 uh, that he for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame that is the attitude there is a joy set before you and I that's a hope we have for which we can endure for Stephen while he was thrown be stoned to death uh, the Bible said he gazed unto heaven and as he gazed unto heaven he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the father and that is interesting this is powerful that as he was going through what he was going through he's focused right even where he should focus and that is we have hope we have hope there is nothing like hopelessness for the believer there is hope for you so contend with hope contend with praise contend with joy contend knowing fully well that God is with you and will not leave you I am so much excited and I feel God in my soul at this hour in every sense of what I've been saying because if only I went on to explain because you must understand that if only you will buy into the program of God you will stand strong as you contend for the faith and there will be no defeating of you and I and I pray in the name of Jesus like Jude prayed now unto him who is able to keep you and I from falling and to present us faultless in the presence of his glory now unto him be all glory unto him we submit unto him we will obey unto him we will give all that is within us to make sure that we have a beautiful end may i ask you to stand where you are right now in the name of jesus and lift up your hands unto heaven and say to the lord heavenly father in the name of jesus i am so thrilled i am so happy for that which you have brought me to know that indeed i can stand strong while i contend for the faith and you have made provision and promises for me to stand strong while i contend even to leave your program on earth now O oh lord in the name of jesus by your spirit whom i will cooperate with from this day forward more than ever i will stand strong whilst i contend for the faith in the name of jesus i will contend with joy i will contend with hope i will contend in praise in the mighty name of jesus i will not lose heart i will not faint by your spirit by your grace in jesus mighty name if you pray that prayer i tell you be strong and you can continue to pray in the name of jesus christ this conference continues and more great word of god is coming your way haven't done all things to stand you stand and you stand and keep standing in jesus mighty name amen victory is sure in christ jesus God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon.